one. Hello everyone and welcome to the writer's class. Yeah, it's definitely a writer's class because I mean, we have an academic professor, which means it's kind of like serious and then therefore it has to be more like class, a writer's class. Did you enjoy that ramble? Because I didn't, but I was trying to be funny and it was bad. It was, oh, I need Jade today. I'm, I don't think I'm in the funny mode as you can tell. And I don't know why or how you can tell besides my bad rambling. Anyway, we wrote books. When I say we, it'd be me and Jade, the end I thought ladies who is missing today. Every time I do the we thing, I get so confused. Anyway, in their literally literary life guides with pop poetry, we have, and I thought divorce was bad. And I thought being grown up was easy. If only I were me, a memoir in verse, widow's web, widow's debts and foreign coffee. Hey, that's the one I have. You can get all of those wherever you get your audio books. And then if you wanna know so much more about us, I know you do. Look at this face, you wanna know more. No, that's not the right face for you want to know more. Anyway, <clears throat> you can go to www.endithoughtladies.com and you can see the rest of the 11 books that we have. But you're not here to hear about me because I could talk about me all day and enjoy it. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Kelly DeLong. I am an associate professor of English at Clark Atlanta University and a fiction writer and also a nonfiction writer. And I have uh, established the uh, career writing program at Clark Atlanta. I'm sorry, did you say you established the career of writing? Creative. Program? Yes. The what? The career writing program. We have a minor which I created and I am in charge of. How? <laughs> yeah, we, no. have, we have a career writing minor, it's 18 credits. You can take classes. I teach the fiction classes. We have two fiction classes, Introduction to Fiction and Fiction Workshop, Introduction to Creative Nonfiction and the workshop for that. And then there's also a poetry element, which I don't teach poetry classes. We do have, and we also, I also teach a class on our literary magazine, which is our CAU Review. And that is for our students, our current students and our, any alumni that want to send their work in as well. And that's been going for several years. Now it's going really nicely. I am so, this is amazing. I love it. When you know, when you read people's bios, you're like, okay, that seems nice. Mm -hmm, that seems nice. But then when you pick someone and you talk to them, you're like, oh, they're actually amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's nice to know. Okay. <clears throat> Skipping all of this, I'm going to try to be serious and get my professionalism on. And it never works, but I'm going to try anyway. What made you want to teach writing? Because you are a writer. I didn't want to teach writing. <laughs> I, uh, I was an English major as an undergraduate, and I was an English major because I knew I loved to write, and I knew I, I loved reading fiction. I loved novels and short stories, and professors said, you know, you might want to think about getting an MFA, and MFA is a Master of Fine Arts in Career Writing, and I said, why would I want to do that? And she said, well, if you get a teaching assistantship with that, you can go for free. And I said, okay, so I can learn about writing. I can keep writing. I don't have to go out and get a job right away. And they'll pay me to do it. And she's like, yeah, all right. So that's what I did. So I had uh, you know, eight years of graduate school, MFA, and then a PhD, all paid for by the universities because I was teaching for them. It never dawned to me that I was gonna end up being a professor. <laughs> It just is the only way I can make money and still have time to write on the side. That was the only reason I ended up in education. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay, first of all, I, I've never heard that story before, so that is very unique. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And now I'm like, mm, I want to go for an MFA. <laughs> I've never wanted to do that in my whole life. Anyway. Uh, and then, of course, my second question has got to be about your writing and um, what you write and why you write your why. You know, for about 30 years, I was exclusively a fiction writer, uh, mostly short stories. Uh, I published them in, you know, literary journals around the country. Then I published a novel uh, and then I got tired of fiction. <laughs> I wanted to uh, try new things. And I got very enamored with creative nonfiction, especially the personal essay that has uh, parts of it 
that read like fiction. So I could transfer my fiction skills into a different type of writing instead of making up stories and thinking, oh, does this, does this work? Does this sound right? Uh, does this believable? I was taking my own life and things that happened to me and taking those conflicts and I was working with them and I, I found them to be more enjoyable because what I always notice when you go to a reading or when you read something or somebody hears you read something, they always say, is that true? Is that real? You know, and you say, no, it's a work of fiction. But they'll say like, but I know there are parts of you in there, right? So I got tired of saying, well, I made most of it up. And I just thought, you know, let's take those things and let's make them actual, you know, let's write about them as they happen as best I can. You can't remember everything. And I got, I found more fun doing that. And then I, uh, so I published a novel, but then I, the next book I published was uh, called The Freshman Year in HBCU. And it was definitely a, a creative nonfiction piece where I interviewed students as they went through their uh, freshman year. And it was a way for me to show students, uh, my students who struggled year in, year out, what it takes either, you know, what, what goes into making a, a, a unsuccessful first year or what goes into making successful first year. You follow these four freshmen through their freshman year. And I love writing that stuff. I really love the not, I love interviewing people. I love working with that. So lately, these days, I'm more nonfiction than fiction. I still have stories out there. I try to get published, but I don't write novels or anything anymore. It's all, it's all nonfiction for me. Do you think you're going to take a step further and go into journalism with your career? No. Your later no. years? No? No. Uh, I'm not I trained. I was looking forward to a blog. I was like, all right, <laughs> blog. I'm not trained in it and I would feel uncomfortable. I, I, I it sounds, it just sounds egotistical, but I always went into writing because I wanted to write about me. <laughs> because I, understand. I think I, most, I, most writers see themselves as the most interesting thing and you want to, I hate to use the phrase, express themselves, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I did love I, I love writing the freshman year at an HBCU, but I, I wouldn't I don't see myself keep on writing that type of book. I, I love prefer writing the things that happen to me and exploring those things because I'm all about uh, understanding who I am, why I'm here and what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. So um, that just makes me wonder, like, I think about sometimes that I think writers have some of us have very interesting lives because we need something to write about. Um, otherwise, we'd have boring books. And also, that I love the fact that when you do a, a memoir, or not even a memoir, when you do creative nonfiction, you base it off of pieces of your life, the research is already done because you were there. That's right. That's oh, right. That is my favorite part about not, like, because when you use fiction, you're like, all right, I'm, I got to research that. I got to research that. Yeah, it's a lot. Anyway, uh, I really, really would love to know about the fiction novels. I'm sorry. I know you love your creative nonfiction, and and so do I. I occasionally like creative nonfiction, but uh, I love to hear about fiction. What did you make up off the top of your head? <laughs> well, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I always work with the thing I know best, whether it was my fiction or my nonfiction. And that is my inner conflicts, <laughs> my internal conflicts. So I might have a character who's somewhat different from me and I've written from the female perspective many times, but they're all many, if they're not someone I really know very well, like a family member or something like that, I'm usually, even in my fiction, taking those conflicts that I'm very familiar with because they reside within me. <laughs> so when I make things up, I don't really do a good job making up characters and motivation and their internal conflicts. I'm much better at uh, taking a character who has my type of inner conflict and then creating scenes that best bring that conflict out. And that might be based on based on something that happened to me, or it might be just about identical identical to what happened to me. Depends on the piece. And I love how you're still keeping the people out there who read your fiction and mystery. He said it might be, or it could be completely fictional. You're gonna have to read it again and try to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> last question. Next, the last question. 
So you have the responsibility of building the writer's minds of tomorrow. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I guess a lot different from the way I used to. Um, today, I hate to say it, but students don't read. Uh, there's less reading than has ever been before. And, and they want to write, but they don't want to read. So I don't think about myself turning students into writers as much as I prefer to try to turn them into readers. Uh, because you cannot write <laughs> unless you're a big time reader and they just don't want to hear that. And it's, it's deflating. So my goal, I always tell my writers, I teach composition, I teach uh, US, I teach you know American literature and I teach the career writing courses. And I always say first, my first job is to make you a better writer. But the only way I can do that is if you are a better reader. So I make them better readers. Hopefully it translates into writing. But, you know, you don't find that they don't. I, once they graduate, who knows what happens? <laughs> I know they become better readers because they have to have that manual that they have to read for their jobs. And, you know, when they first get it. So at least they're reading something. I hope. <laughs> and who knows, you might produce the next, you know, great American novel it might be one of your students. It's always possible. I lied to you. I said next to the last question, but I have one more. Do you have time for one more before I get to the last question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think makes up a good, liter solid literary piece of work? Because you see them all the time, considering that you're with the career writing uh, section, uh, minor. So what do you think does that? So uh, do you mean like published work or student work? I was thinking student work, but now that you said published, I wouldn't know. That's not, <laughs> not the students aside. Yes, what published work? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I prefer to talk about my students <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay, it. never mind then. I, the, the, the thing that sets the, cat, the, the writers who actually have some talent versus those who, who I know are never going to be able to, to write uh, fiction or even nonfiction is the ability to create character and conflict, uh, taking that, writing that personality and getting it down on paper. So showing character through dialogue and through action, those are extremely difficult things for students to do. And the student who can do that is a student who's, whose work I want to read. Even if the story doesn't really work very well, I want to read that character. I, the, the dialogue says something about the character. The actions say something about the character. That's whose fiction I want to read. Uh, most of the time, students just don't know how to do it. And no matter how much we talk about it and look at stories, it's, it's a challenge. It's a, it's a big challenge. So that's what I look for in my students' writing. As far as my my reading itself, I'll, I'll have to admit that um, <laughs> less and less do I read fiction. I just don't read fiction much anymore. <laughs> and if I do, it's usually by someone who, whose work I have admired in the past. So I have to say, to be read by you seems like it's going to be a challenge. Because I mean, and to be fiction, I pick things up because I just want to escape like everyone goes like this, um, you write literary and I read genre. And they're like, how can you read this and write that? The literary is a genre, just be, you know, just to be clear, clear here, <laughs> that is a genre. Oh my God. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. But it always feels separate, you know? Never mind. not important. This is not what this show was about. It's about you. <laughs> but to go down my soapbox rabbit hole. Literary and genre fiction. Okay, last question for real this time. Like, not no jokes, no, no lying at all. Where can we find out more information about your writings? Well, you can always Google me. Uh, there are plenty of pieces of mine on the web. And also, my publisher is Al Canyon Press, O W L Canyon Press. And you can purchase my books through there. They're a lot cheaper than if you go to Amazon. <laughs> so that's Thanks. the way to do it. Thank you so much, Professor DeLong. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, it feels really nice to say that and be like professional at the end. Thank you very much, Professor DeLong. I got to interview a professor. All right. Uh, you can find out everything that your ladies are up to at www.andithoughtladies.com. And while you're there, take a moment, go to the... No, I was about to do the old website. I was about to say the ladies tab. It is still up there, but you can... You don't want to do it this way. You want to go to the pretty site, which is www.andithoughtladies.com. You take a moment, scroll down to the middle, and you can see the three charities that we proudly support. We ask that you please give them a little help now, too. And remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona and the Missing Jade. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.